Bit site fasciotomy for compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome remains a challenging problem for the clinicians. Its diagnosis may not be that easy, and it may be confusing. It may not be straightforward. In general, a high index of suspicion is necessary for the diagnosis of compartment syndrome. If a patient has pain more than what is expected from surgery or from the injury, or if there is an increase in narcotic requirements and the patient has tense swelling and pain, and the pain will increase with passive stretch of the compartment muscles, then this is an indication that the patient may be suffering from a compartment syndrome. You like to see these patients and treat them during the impending stage, not during the well-established stage. You want to diagnose compartment syndrome early before the muscle dies and this will cause weakness to the muscle function. Diagnosis and treatment for compartment syndrome should be done early. The tight dressings should be removed. If there is a cast, you should split the cast and remove it and examine the extremity. Examine the extremity for pain, for a swelling, for pain with passive stretch. Don't wait for the classic old teaching of the five P's to appear. These findings are considered to be late findings. Don't wait for the parathesia, the pulselessness, the pallor, and the paralysis. Look at these four to the right in the screen, the paralysis, the pallor, the parathesia, the pulselessness. These are bad signs. They are late findings. They represent irreversible damage to the muscles and nerves. In fact, the patient may have good pulses, even in the presence of compartment syndrome. Pulses will be normal in the presence of compartment syndrome. Combination of pain and swelling and pain with passive stretch is an indication of compartment syndrome. If you suspect compartment syndrome and you are not sure of the diagnosis, then measure the pressures of the compartments. A pressure greater than 30 mm mercury or within 30 mm mercury of the diastolic pressure, that's an indication that the patient probably is going in the direction of compartment syndrome. Then an immediate fasciotomy should be considered. Compartment syndrome can occur in any anatomical part in the upper extremity or lower extremity. The most commonly involved anatomic part is the lower leg, and the most commonly involved compartment in the lower leg is the anterior compartment. The anterior compartment of the leg contains the deep peroneal nerve. The deep peroneal nerve gives sensation in the first web space. So when you examine the patient for compartment syndrome, check for numbness of the first web space. Elevated pressure affects the microcirculation and the perfusion of the tissues. The muscle compartment needs to be released within six hours. Irreversible damage can occur after eight hours. A formal release of the muscle compartments in the operating room under general anesthesia continues to be the procedure of choice. However, you may not be able to do that. You may get called for a patient in the intensive care unit or in the emergency room or the patient may be in the floor and you don't have time to do the procedure in the operating room because of patient condition or operating room conditions. Bedside fasciotomy under conscious sedation and local anesthesia was developed in order to avoid delay in fasciotomy surgery. Which patient will benefit from bedside fasciotomy? Patient with delayed presentation, or if you anticipate delay in the surgery, or if there is contraindication 
to general anesthesia. Time is critical for the release of compartment syndrome. It is advisable to do fasciotomy early. If fasciotomy is done within 3 to 4 hours, the damage is reversible. At 6 hours, there will be variable muscle damage. Why the delay for fasciotomy can happen? It can happen due to medical comorbidities. You need clearance for general anesthesia, or the patient may be on anticoagulation and you need to reverse that and control that. Maybe the patient is a polytrauma patient. You need time for resuscitation. The patient may have a recent oral intake, fluids or solid food. It's probably not easy to guess and to predict when the exact onset of increased pressure of compartment syndrome occurred in the extremity. Bedside fasciotomy is a good option for patients with delayed presentation or in those with anticipated time delay. The procedure can be done in the ICU, in the AR, or on the floor. The patient can be given conscious sedation. Give the appropriate doses, and some doses may be appropriate for the normal size healthy adult, but it may not be appropriate for patients with sleep apnea or other medical comorbidities. It can also use 1% lidocaine without epinephrine to infiltrate the marked skin and subcutaneous tissue incision line. Bedside fasciotomy can be done for the arm, the forearm, the hand, the thigh, the lower leg, and the foot. It is good to train a diverse group of health professionals in how to do bedside fasciotomy. I have the video on the incisions needed to do fasciotomy in different parts of the body. The title of the video and the link of the video is attached underneath this video, so you can review it. How is the fasciotomy done for the lower leg? There are four compartments in the leg, the anterior, the lateral, the superficial, posterior, and deep posterior compartments are usually released through two incision, one medial and one lateral. You can see here, the 1% lidocaine is used without epinephrine at the marked skin incision. If you want to do two incisions, then there's a lateral leg incision. The lateral incision is made halfway between the tibia and the fibula for the release of the anterior and the lateral compartments. And you can see here, we are releasing the anterior and the lateral compartments of the leg. When you release the lateral compartment, avoid injury to the superficial perineal nerve. And then you make the medial incision, which is about 2 cm posterior to the tibia. So you release the superficial and the deep posterior compartments. You can also do the procedure through one lateral incision. You can see the title and the link attached underneath this video, just in case you want to do one incision.